Okay, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Uh, today what we're going to do is take a look at uh, the uh, fur. Basically fur is kind of like hair, but fur is kind of unusual. There's all sorts of different ways to use fur. You can use it as a, as a growing um, substance of some sort, or you can use it as fur on a model or a creature that you've created. So um, in this case, uh, what I've done is made a render of something I've done. I just did a quick example of how you can use uh, use fur here. Um, as you can see in this uh, QuickTime movie, uh, I created a, a animation that basically populates with grass and then grows kind of over time. It's about a 10 second animation and uh, Maya crunched through this fairly quickly in, in an output. I think it only took about maybe 10 to 12 minutes to make a 300 frame uh, render, um, which is kind of nice with fur because that way you can use it and it's not computationally expensive so to speak so it works pretty good you can see that where there's lots of possibilities of um, compositing it into uh, you know another scene so uh, check this out what I've done is I created my 300 uh, frame sequence with um, with the grass here and the growing and then in After Effects I brought it in there and in the background I just sort of put in an image that was sort of relative to the scene so it's no big no big deal I just sort of did a quick composite to show you kind of what we'll be taking a look at here today uh, with this uh, growing grass so this first part we're just going to explore um, the different properties of grass and fur and various things like that and then we'll have a second part that'll show us how to animate this stuff so that it um, grows nicely. So, cool. Stick around. Let's uh, let's start from the beginning. I'm gonna I'm just gonna get rid of that. Here was my starting scene, and in this case, I'm just gonna leave my grass where it is. But I'm gonna show you how to um, how to attach <clears throat> fur to a, a surface. So let's just get rid of this to start with, and uh, we'll maybe go to the home view. Uh, let's go make sure that you're, um, you're set in your, your fur settings over here. In your tabs, you're going to notice that you have some fur right there. And um, over here in your rendering, you could put this probably up onto, um, yeah, you could put it at, at polygons for the moment. It doesn't really matter. But you'll notice that when I, I hit fur right there, now I have some choices that automatically pop up in my, um, in my uh, view window here. So let's do this <clears throat> let's create a, a, a nerve just a, a simple sphere and we'll just sort of put that on the grid and just sort of put it right there okay so now I have a, a nerve sphere and in order to attach a uh, piece of fur to this which I could um, come up here and as you can see down here we'll, we'll this will tell us what it is uh, this one right here is the bear this one's a bison, this one's a calico cat, uh, this is dreadlocks. So you have a bunch of different choices. Let's choose for the moment, I'm going to choose the sheep input here. So I'm just going to click on sheep. And as you can see, it automatically assigns some various default properties to that. So let's take a closer look at that. At first, in the viewport, your render won't look all that great. Um, it basically, we're going to fine tune this a lot more based on the default settings. So in my render view right here, I'm going to take a quick render and we're going to see what it looks like by default. And it generally will take a second or two. Okay, so that's my starting point. Uh, my scene in the viewport looks like this, which doesn't really look all that great. And then over here, you can notice that uh, it just sort of is, is a um, basic uh, sheep's fur. So that's cool in and of itself. So let's play with that for a few seconds. Um, let's say that we want to create that fur and, and make it a little bit larger uh, or make its length a little longer. Watch this. I'm going to minimize this render view for a second and we're going to just play with the length for a second. If you were to click on this, uh, this object, make sure that your, your hair is, is active. And you'll note that because it'll say sheep for feedback and here's the feedback shape and then here's sheep one. So if I click on that sheep one tab you'll notice now I have all the attributes that are related to that so that's kinda where we wanna be if you get lost you'll just go back to these settings under sheep one and if I bring that length out you'll see automatically in the viewport exactly what happens it uh, sorta of gives it a, a lot more length and whatnot so let's just say we bring our length up a little bit and uh, we'll take another quick render um, the render 
uh, is always going to be needed. You're going to use this render window a lot to sort of see what it actually looks like. So now you can see where it, it's longer, but then again, it's taking up a lot more space. So it just looks like a fuzzy blob there. So right now, baldness is set at one and baldness is a value between uh, zero and, and one. So you can kind of decrease that a bit if you want. Let's see what baldness gives us at about oh half strength there. Uh, we'll take a quick render and in that render you'll notice that it, it sort of decreases it a little bit. And let's cut it back even more. I'm going to go down about half from there. We'll take another quick render and then we'll pretty much be done with messing around with the length and baldness. Okay, so now we had the baldness. We did some length work. If you look at um, inclination, roll, and polar, those will basically give you um, various, watch what happens over there. It basically m messes with the inclination of the hair in a different angle, sets it off a little bit. You can put some roll on it, which gives it some other characteristics. Basically, you're gonna be playing around with these a lot just to, to find out what might look best for you. Okay, so let's come down here into our base opacity. The base opacity refers to the um, uh, part of the, the fur sitting closest to that um, to the base. So I'm going to bring the base opacity down a little bit, and you're going to have to play around with these a lot, do a lot of renders, and kind of see exactly what happens to that. So now you can see with lowering the base opacity, I can now see through that fur a little bit more into that object. So that's something to be aware of. Now, what's really cool about this, I'm going to move my render view over here. Let's come up in here, make sure our hair is active on there, or our fur, our sheep one. And I'm going to click on presets right here. And as you can see, when I click on that preset, I have some various things that I can mix in with this, um, with this hair. So I'm going to come down here and go to Gorilla. All right. And we're going to put some Gorilla hair in there. We're going to do like a 50-50 blend. So I'm going to hit blend right there and boom, you'll notice it changes colors because this is uh, this is now picking up some of the colors that were in that blend from the gorilla. So let's take another render. Let's bring our render view window over here. I'm going to do a render real quick and you'll see where it changes and gives it a little bit different type of texture. Um, it, it now is a little bit oh, more more scraggly but you can see where we've altered that quite a bit so that's kind of cool might as well stay with that for the moment I'm gonna minimize my render view here and you notice that you can choose a base color and a tip color um, if we wanted to switch that up a bit and maybe make the base color more bluish I could go ahead and maybe switch over there into the blue and I'll go ahead and hit accept and if you come over into your render view you can go ahead and do a quick render of that and you'll notice that it, it really picks up a lot more blue. You can see where that blue is showing up. So you can fine tune your, your characteristics um, all day long, <laughs> all night long. So uh, just something to be aware of. Okay, so now let's come down here. When you have a base width or a tip width, the base width means like where the, the hair follicle is attaching to the surface. And you know, with this base width, sometimes um, you, know, you can bring it up or, or back it'll have a dramatic effect on um, it, what that looks like. We've just raised up our um, base width there. So if you take another render, you'll notice where it, it looks a little more full. So it has, has a little more fullness and that's basically just because it widened the uh, follicle at the base. So that's kind of what that's all about. And as you can see, there's other choices here that you'll go through continuously, um, sort of you know optimizing your different uh, options. Um, we could bring the length out a little bit more. Let's say we just do that for kicks and grins, all right? And then if you wanna, I say, mess with scraggle. Scraggle's kind of a fun one. If you just kinda move that in, you can see where it gets a little kinda kinky. Um, the hairs kinda kink up, so you can, you can play around with that. And all of these attributes can be animated over time. So it's really cool. It can um, give you quite a bit of variety in the ways of effects that you can create um, when you're using them in a scene. So anyway, that's Scraggle. And uh, Scraggle frequency, it's basically just, you know, alters the frequency of the Scraggle, maybe random here or there a little bit more. 
Uh, clumping. Clumping will put it, um, things into various clumps. And if I were to say really super clump it, let's take a quick render, see what that looks like super clumped up. And there it is. So it kind of gives you an idea over here in the viewport of what it'll actually look like, but it's not always the case. So I'm going to I'm going to declump that a bit. I'm going to bring the clumping down because I don't I don't need this to clump up very much. So we'll just declump it. All right. Now um, you can go through and, and play with the rest of these. These all have various um, you know properties to them. Remember you can animate these over time, and this is just sort of an introduction to uh, using fur. So what I did here on on this level is I created some grass. So I created grass on a on a plane. And then on this plane, I assigned that, created a special Lambert II shader that I assigned to the plane first, just to kind of look more like dirt, kind of like a reddish dirt. So I assigned that. It's a real simple color to just sort of work with, um, more organic, I guess. Um, so that's kind of what we did there. Now, um, there's lots of other options down here um, under your details section, where every single one of these properties up here you can um, sort of animate even further um, with amplitude, noise amplitude, and frequency. And you'll have to do a lot of testing uh, to see kind of how that affects it. But just like, for example, let's take the, um, let's take our, uh, our scraggle, for example, and maybe add some, some noise amplitude to it. Um, we don't really have any scraggle on there right now, but this is affecting the grass, as you can see right there. And let's see, this right here is affecting the, uh, the hairs. So you can kind of play around with those all you want. Uh, let's do another quick render. And uh, yeah, and you can imagine the possibilities that you can have with this stuff. So um, play around with that quite a bit. It's a really good thing to know. And it's just the concept basically here. So you can see what it's done. And um, there really is a lot of versatility to it. So. Uh, there you have it. Okay, so um, stay tuned for the next tutorial and um, we'll go over um, various ways to animate the properties of these over time. So we'll be getting more into the, the timeline down here and keyframing some stuff in the timeline. So there you go. I uh, hope you had a good time on this one and practice with your fur. Go ahead and choose some of these other choices up here and play around with those and get a good grip on how they work. And uh, essentially that's it. It's pretty simple and most of it's pretty self-explanatory. So uh, enjoy and we'll catch you for the next one. And uh, remember, read a book every day. Uh, learn something. <laughs> Thanks for watching.